Welcome to this tutorial on beatboxing and sequencing in Soundtrack Pro. So first we want to set up our file management. We're going to go into an external drive in the finder and make a new folder. So that's step one. Step two is saving our project file. There's our project file saved, and you'll see it in the Finder window. So there's our project file. And then the last step is to set your recording location, which is similar to Scratch Disk. Anytime you record audio, it will put the audio in that folder. So you have to click Soundtrack Pro Menu Preferences, and then you click to the Recording tab, and here we're going to choose a Scratch Disk. So there's our folder, and say Open. So now our recording location is set. When we record an audio file, it will be stored in the right place. Okay. Next, we're going to record arm a track. So in order to get audio to record in any of these tracks, you click the arm button. And we're going to start to see metering here. Uh, if you don't have headphones on and you have the onboard speakers up at a decent volume, you might hear feedback at this step here. So make sure you plug in some headphones. Uh, feedback is when audio plays out of the speakers into the microphone, out of the speakers into the microphone, and it's a, a fast loop and a high frequency squeal. So you want to try to avoid that. Um, another thing that you want to set up is changing your input from stereo to mono, because we're only recording one signal that plays equally out of both speakers, the left and right speaker. Um, if you were to be recording something a source that was stereo, like let's say a keyboard that has left and right sound um, information, then you would want stereo. But we're going to stick with mono and we're using the built-in microphone. If you were to use a different interface, you could change that here. Um, but for now, built-in microphone. And the microphone is actually right at the top of the iMac monitor, so st straight up. Uh, you'll see the camera, and then above that, I'm going to get close to it here, you see the microphone, it's, uh, it's got a couple pinholes up in the top of the screen, so that's where you're recording sound. Okay, so in order to do the recording, you record on the track and then you click the record button, and we're currently recording at this level that you see in your meters to this track. So you want to stay below zero or else it's going to clip. If I get really close to the speaker, I start to get clippy and, and distorted sounding. So uh, you want to have a, a certain distance from the microphone um, or you set the gain appropriately um, so that you don't go over zero decibels. So uh, the gist of this tutorial is we want to sequence together some sounds. So um, you can make some snapping noises or clapping noises or we want to make a bass drum type sound so and then stopping playback you'll see now that we have audio waveform to track and what we want to do is edit the waveform and turn it into a sequence kind of like a drum beat uh, and then if you wanted to add other sounds on top of it you could use the other tracks so I'm going to take what I have here and just like Final Cut Pro, simple key commands A for arrow, which will select, move, and trim, and B for blade, which will cut or split the track. So I'm going to make some cuts. It looks like I have some transients here. Uh, zooming in, command plus or command minus. It's going to zoom to where the time bar is. So I actually shift Z, zoom out, A for arrow select and zoom in, command plus, and I'm going to play back. So there's our snap. I'm going to cut this B for blade. Actually, let me turn this record R off. So cut, there's our snap. A for arrow, I'm going to drag this to a, a, the track 2 below. And see if I can find another one. There's a clap. Drag that down. Another clap, I like the first one better. Or we want to make a bass drum type sound. So 
Maybe this here. So B for bleed, cut, cut, A for arrow, drag it down. And uh, let's see here. B for bleed, cut. So I'm just grabbing a couple different sounds that I want to sequence in time. So A, and actually, I need a higher pitch sound. So let's see what we got here. We'll use this sound here. Okay. So I'm going to zoom out. Globally, Shift Z, it'll show you everything on the timeline. I'm select everything that I don't want and delete it. I'll grab what I do want and drag it up to more close to the front of the timeline. I'm going to zoom in again to see what I got. Again, it's zooming to where the time bar is. So, all right. So if I put these all, A for arrow, put these all together, deselect and then move. Uh, notice that it slides and it doesn't lock together. It's because snapping isn't turned on yet. That's under the view menu snap or just hit the N key so I'll hit in that turn snap on and now see how it kind of locks to where it should go and it's it's snapping not to tracks it's snapping to these little time bar locations Oops, undo that command Z undo zoom in because the more you zoom in the more you get of these time bar increments so let's see here what I got here okay so I'm going to take these and turn them into a drum beat um, I'm going to take the higher pitch thing and make it my hi-hat and then the lower pitch sounds will make them uh, bass drum sounds if you have clicked and drug in this time bar area, you've set up a loop. To delete the loop, you select, you click right on the blue triangle, so that's looping. You click right on the blue triangle and hit the delete key. So what I want to do here is grab my hi-hat and put it at different intervals. So I'm going to put it at one, two, three, four. And to do that, I need to duplicate it. So I select by clicking on it, see how it's highlighted and command D will duplicate. So I'll move that there, duplicate again, and move it to three, and duplicate again, and move it to four. And then if I might want to set up a loop here, so I'll click and drag all the way out to the first bar of um, number two. So one, two, three, four of bar one will loop. And then I'm going to try to grab a bass drum type sound. So, well, let's listen to what we have there now in our loop. And this is actually weakened. In. So if I listen here, I'm gonna delete my loop for a second. I actually like this sound for a bass drum. And we're gonna put those on one and three. I'm gonna duplicate. And I'm going to use this as my snare drum sound, which we're going to put on two and four. So I'm going to duplicate. Now, if I set my loop up again, this is a basic rock beat. Okay, so a little bit about mixing. If you wanted to change the levels, like it sounds like our snare drum clapping is a little loud, so you could drag it down here. That also corresponds with what happened here. So if you see, I'm down at negative six now. So you can use the, the mixer to set up your mix. Okay, and then um, if you wanted to, you can add other sounds. You could layer more sounds. Maybe we'll put some snaps in there too on top of the snare. So command D duplicate. S is for solo, M is for mute.
and you can arrange this in a variety of ways to make different types of drum beats. Um, this is the simplest way to, to set up a loop in a drum beat. If you wanted to have this be a longer file, you can then duplicate what we have. So I'll, I'll delete this, what we have on our timeline. I'm going to highlight this, clicking and dragging, selecting all, or Command A would select all. Command D will duplicate. And I just want to make sure I put this on the correct bar. Because snapping is turned on, it, it will now line up to these grid lines. And I'm going to highlight all the again and command D and then move everything on to the beginning of the bar and shift Z will zoom out globally command A selects all command D I just duplicated everything again and then move this again to the bar shift Z zooms out so now we have like a 15 second loop rather than a little two second loop and if I click here and delete now we can play this without the loop looping of playback and on, you'll see how we've mixed it. We're going over zero decibels here. So the last thing I want to do before I, I export this file is make sure it doesn't go over zero in my mix. And there's a couple ways you can do that. So I'm going to talk about effects, and then I'm going to talk about submix. First, let's talk about effects. On the master track, so if I select master, I'm going to put a dynamics processor called a limiter and it limits it from going over zero because if it goes over zero it clips and it doesn't sound good so we're going to hit plus and now we've added the limiter to the master track so when you hit playback this is the reduction that the limiter is providing so it won't go over zero decibels now and our loop kind of jumped at the end there because I didn't have the loop set up correctly Okay, so we've added the limiter to the master track Let's add another effect. So if you select any track, you can add an effect. So let's say um, we want to go on our hi-hat track and change the pitch of it. So if I select track 1, go into pitch, grab the pitch shifter, and hit the plus button. So now we're adding this to track 1. So track 1 has a pitch shifter. Uh, set to pitch it up by 7 semitones. Semitones is uh, a larger adjustment of pitch, sense is a smaller adjustment of pitch, and then mix is how much you're applying it to the original sound. So at 50% you still hear the original sound and you're also hearing the, the pitch shifted sound. At 100% only pitch shifted, at 0% no pitch shifted sound and all original sound. So let's listen, I'm going to solo this track. Let's go up to 100% in the mix. Here's our weird loop. We'll stop. Okay, and then I'm gonna pitch up a little bit more. So this is a higher pitch. Bring everything back in. Maybe we'll do the bass drum too. So select track three, and this time we'll add a pitch shifter and pitch it down. So mix up and pitch down. So we've just pitched up the hi-hat and pitched down the bass drum track on track three. And um, it sounds like a basic rock beat now. It's, it's kind of a simple beat, but if you wanted to uh, change how you have your sounds arranged in time, that's how you can get uh, different rhythms. Okay, so I think that sounds good. I'm happy with my 15 second loop. Now I want to export it so I can get it over to, let's say, Final Cut Pro or iTunes. Um, so in the submix track, I'm going to scroll down so you see it here. You want to make sure that you set your output to stereo. Surround sound will give you six different tracks left, right, center, left surround, right surround, and subwoofer. And uh, we rarely mix and surround. And um, if you ever want to get this to be an MP3 file, MP3 files cannot be surround sound. So go to stereo 1 2, and now you're ready for exporting. So uh, let's just show some file management before we export. So we have in our finder a folder on an external drive with a project file. And then inside of that project file, we have set up a recording location. And this is the recording that um, we, we did when we started click 
the record button and then stop the recording by either clicking the record button again or hitting the space bar to stop. The space bar starts and stops playback. Uh, if we look back to the timeline, we have all this arranged in time and we want to commit this to a brand new audio file. So to do that, you file export your AIFF file. AIFF is uncompressed audio. Uh, MP3 would be a compressed file. We don't want to use MP3s though, we want it to sound uh, like the original. So we're going to use AIFF and we're going to save as, again with the date. So we'll call this mix and export. So it's going to go through the exporting process, and you'll see that it's doing a little bit of leveling. Level, you'll, you'll see your meters uh, showing you the level. And then if we go into our finder, we can go into our folder. And now here's the, the file that we just exported. It should be 15 seconds long if I hit space bar to preview. Or 15 second long kind of basic rock beat with pitched up hi-hat sound and a pitched down bass drum sound that's been limited so it doesn't go over zero decibels with the master track, exported a stereo AIFF file. And that's going to do it for this tutorial.